Should therapists, coaches, or anyone else be recommending no contact as a blanket strategy to everyone who's in a relationship with a narcissistic person? My name's Ruthann. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm an expert in relationships and issues of narcissism. And in this video, I'm going to talk about why blanket advice to go no contact is really unhelpful. I'm also going to talk about alternative ways that you can manage a relationship with a narcissistic person, whether they're a partner, parent, family member, or friend, to manage that relationship in ways that really take care of you and that in some cases may actually work to improve the relationship. No contact is often advised to people who believe that they're in relationships with narcissistic people. And it basically involves cutting the person off completely. So you block their phone number, you block their email address, you block them on all social media. So there is basically no way for them to get in touch with you and no way for you to respond to them. Now, there are times when this is actually very helpful. If you are in a kind of on again, off again relationship with someone and you want to bring that relationship to an end, not having contact can give you time and space to focus on yourself away from the relationship and build yourself up again. That can be a very helpful time to use no contact. No contact may also be essential in cases of abuse because it may be absolutely vital that you have no contact with this person and that they have no means to get in touch with you in order to keep you safe. So I am not against no contact in all circumstances. And I also want to be very clear that the suggestions in this video for how you can navigate a relationship whilst taking care of yourself and potentially also improving the relationship should not be used in cases of abuse. If someone is a risk to you physically or emotionally, or they're very controlling of you, then this is not good advice for you to implement in that relationship. But relationships and human beings are very complicated and we can have very mixed feelings about our relationships and the people that we're with. Sometimes a relationship with a narcissistic person can be characterized by times of connection and love. And yes, narcissistic people are capable of loving those close to them, but it can also be characterized at other times by a sense of rejection, abandonment, loneliness, invisibility, or even criticism and condescension. And in recent years, I've had many people in my office in absolute despair after consuming social media content about narcissism that leaves them convinced that the only way to navigate a relationship with a narcissist is to cut them off entirely. And this is particularly true for people who have narcissistic parents because they want to maintain or continue a relationship with that parent. They don't want to cut them off entirely, and it could be very, very painful for them to do so. And cutting off another family member is also an enormous thing to do. It can have huge implications for other relationships with wider family, and not everybody wants or needs to do that. Some people really value aspects of the relationship that they have with a narcissistic person, and they want to continue that relationship in some shape or form. These are difficult relationships and people can have mixed feelings. On the one hand, they have those moments of love and connection. They have those moments of abandonment and disconnection, of criticism and walking on eggshells. And it can be very, very confusing. Black and white advice to go no contact can kind of seem seductive because it's very certain. But actually, it really doesn't serve the needs of people who have any desire to maintain a relationship with a narcissistic person. And no contact may not always be possible. If you need to navigate co-parenting with an ex-partner who's very narcissistic, no contact may simply not be a possibility for you. My general ethos is to suggest that people don't focus on the pathology of the other person. A lot of social media content about narcissism focuses on the narcissist. It actually gives rather little attention to other people in these relationships, to the effect that those relationships have on them, and how you can build yourself up and take care of yourself if you've been in or are in a relationship with someone who's narcissistic. So I think it can be very helpful to change the focus of attention to look at you rather than at the narcissist. Notice what this relationship brings out on you. Does it bring out defensiveness and anger? Does it bring out people pleasing and tiptoeing on eggshells, trying not to offend someone? What parts of you emerge in this relationship? And also, what doesn't emerge in this relationship? What parts of you may be stifled? Perhaps your sense of humor, perhaps a sense of your own strength and your own autonomy. What disappears in this relationship? Or if this is a relationship with a narcissistic parent, what was stifled? 
throughout your life, what aspects of you haven't had the chance to emerge and what aspects of you may have developed in order to cope with the relationship with your parent and that may be a little overdeveloped. Perhaps you're overplicating, overpleasing of other people. Perhaps you're over perfectionistic, always striving to be the best, to please the other person, to impress the other person and win their approval. Or maybe you're shut down and avoided and withdrawn and terrified to get close to someone because of a fear of being hurt. Narcissistic relationships can affect people in different ways. And acknowledging some of the hurts and the harms that this relationship has had on you can be really, really important because it can help you to identify where you can focus your attention to help foster your growth. As you get to know yourself and you get to maybe notice what's missing and what you may need in your relationships, you can begin to build those things up. Now, I would suggest you build those things up in other relationships rather than in a very difficult relationship, certainly to begin with. With. Practice expressing your needs and asking for things. Practice saying no and holding boundaries. Practice asserting your autonomy and freedom and trying new things. Practice expressing your opinions and your perspective. Intentionally nurturing new habits, new behaviors, new ways of relating to people not only leads to better relationships with other people around you, but it also fosters personal growth and development. And it allows you to build a sense of your own confidence and competence, a sense of your own sturdiness. And that puts you in a much better place to navigate a very difficult or conflicted relationship with a narcissistic person. In schema therapy, we talk about developing a healthy adult self, a wise, compassionate, sturdy part of you. And when you're able to bring this part of you, this healthy adult self, to your relationship with a narcissistic person, you don't need to feel so overwhelmed or offended by their behavior because you're more confident in yourself. You're less personally affected by their criticism. That doesn't mean their criticism is fair, and it certainly isn't, but you're more confident that it's not true, that you're more stable in the face of behaviors that may be hurtful or unfair to you. It also means that you don't need to raise your voice to shout, to scream, and to protest if that is something that comes out of you in this relationship may also mean that you don't tiptoe around on eggshells so much, afraid to express yourself or your own needs. You can learn to communicate more peacefully with a narcissistic person because you have a sense of your own self, your own sturdiness, your own calmness. You have a concern and a compassion for yourself that you're able to be a good advocate for yourself and to act in your own best interests. As you develop this healthier adult side of you that takes control of the ship and steers the direction of this relationship, you can begin to experiment with other ways of managing the relationship. Now, that might mean communicating differently. It may mean working on assertiveness skills. It may mean on working on empathic confrontation, which is something my friend and mentor, Wendy Berry of Disarming the Narcissist, recommend. It may mean offering empathy prompts, which is something Craig Malkin, author of Rethinking Narcissism, suggests. These are all really good strategies that you may be able to implement. It can also mean thinking about practical ways that you can change the environment. For example, is it helpful to have other people around when you're interacting with this person? Because it's maybe too intense when it's just the two of you. And having other people around kind of diffuses the situation and may mean that they're on, well, best behavior. If the conversations that you have with this other person tend to be very emotionally intense and charged, it can be helpful rather than spending time alone with them just talking, that you plan some fun shared activities that help to relax and engage with each other in a kind of fun and active way. That could mean going to the park, playing sports, taking a walk or maybe even catching a movie because then you don't have to have conversation at all. But it can allow you to maintain some connection, but put in a little bit of distance and kind of soften and lighten up the environment around you. you. May also want to think about the amount of time that you spend with this person. Perhaps you don't want it to be too long. Many adult children of narcissistic parents find it very helpful to perhaps limit the duration of visits home. Maybe you don't want to stay overnight, or maybe you only want to stay for one night rather than a prolonged period of time. You might also want to think about the time of day. Are things easier in the morning or the evening? And often a key factor here is alcohol, because sometimes interactions and conflicts can increase when someone starts drinking. So 
having social interactions where there isn't alcohol involved or earlier in the day before alcohol gets involved can also be a helpful way to manage these kinds of relationships. These are practical suggestions that you may be able to implement, but by far the most important thing is working on you, building your sense of yourself, your sense of self-esteem, your compassion for yourself, your ability to assert your boundaries, to really advocate for yourself in the relationship with a narcissistic person, and to experiment with implementing some of these other strategies that may create some more distance in a helpful way. And it may be that as you change, the relationship also changes. And it is certainly not beyond the realms of possibility for people to be pleasantly surprised at what becomes possible in their relationship. At the same time, it can sometimes be the case that implementing these strategies has very little effect whatsoever, or is greeted with scorn, criticism, or condescension. And if that's the case, as tragic as it is, it may help bring you a sense of clarity about what you want to do with this relationship in the future, how maybe you want more distance, or maybe you want to end it completely. But even if that is the decision that you come to, the most important thing here is that you come to the decision from your healthy, adult, grown-up, sturdy self. Because you make that decision not because you're terrified of the narcissistic person, not because you're enraged by them, but because you want to act in your own best interests. You make that decision out of concern for yourself, out of compassion for yourself, and in the service of your needs. What have your experiences been with navigating a relationship with a narcissistic person? I'd love to hear what you think. Did you use no contact? Did it work for you? Or have you found other strategies for navigating a difficult and conflictual relationship? There isn't one size fits all to narcissistic relationships. And your suggestions and experiences may well be helpful to someone else who's navigating something similar. In my opinion, it's not the strategy that matters, but you and your growth and your development and implementing whatever you decide to implement in the service of your needs and your best interests because you genuinely deeply care for yourself. Leave a comment. If you like this video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you'd like to hear more from me. I look forward to seeing you next time. And in the meantime, take good care.